It's a little disturbing on how dirty that water looked. <laughs> Check out how these chicks are doing. They're gonna be going out on pasture this coming weekend. So they got a couple days left here in the brooder. You can see they're getting their feathers really well. I will be turning the lights off tonight. I'll turn one of them off tonight and another one off the following night. And it'll just kind of get them prepared to spend some time outdoors without lights. And I just found some nice dark rich soil and put it in here and you can see what I'm talking about. They go all over it, eating it. It's almost like they go after that before their feed. All right, we're headed out now to uh, do the afternoon cattle move. And the cows are just down the road on our lease farm. They've been down here for probably about uh, three weeks and they've got several more weeks to go. And uh, we got a ton of rain. Well, we didn't get so much rain. We only end, wound up with a three quarters of an inch. Um, if you would go no more than probably three miles south of us, I would say they probably got somewhere around three to four inches. And there was trees down everywhere, tons of people without power. I had to take four different ways to get home in order till I found a way that actually I could get through because there was so many trees down. I am very thankful that we did not lose power. You know, our meat storage facility, I didn't have to break the generator out and worry about all that. So thankful we did not lose our power. And they left this morning's paddock really nice. You can see a good stand still of grass. I would say that's a good 10 inches still. And the whole paddock is pretty consistent of that. So I'm real happy with how we're leaving this paddock and we are slowing them down really well. Um, we got six and a half days out of this five acres. For August, on a third clipping or a third rotation, I'm very happy with that. And I can hear it coming. Not going to complain a bit about that. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Big old drops out here. <laughs> and it is hot and humid. And those are cold drops of rain. Better roll up the gator windows. All right, I wanted to show you guys something. Um, so this is the back of the paddock. And you can see the paddock looks really nice back here. There is a tree line and this would be the west side. So the sun is gonna get blocked by this tree line starting at about three o'clock till the whole afternoon and i'm having a problem with them really beating this up back here what i've been doing is coming out here in the morning move because you can see in the morning they don't really beat it up because they don't need the shade but you can see every other paddock out here They've really beat up and it's not a huge area. It's just a small area under the trees, but I don't want to have bare soil anywhere. So what I've been doing before I let them in this paddock is I come out here with a, I uh, got a bag of grass seed on my buggy and a little flicker. And I just kind of walk through this little area back here and flick a bunch of grass seed. And I'm going to see how it works because I didn't do it at the start of this field so i did it the last couple days here so we should easily be able to do it as a test um, and i'm going to see if by them coming out here stomping this stuff down into the ground if it'll just grow back a lot faster 
you know when you're working with a 60 plus day rotation generally we do get regrowth back here but it really doesn't completely heal itself till the next year so i'm interested to see if by flicking that grass seed if it makes a difference you know it's something that takes you know less than a minute to do so i think it's well worth the time providing it actually works we fence off all of our wet areas or our ponds this is only a pond that's probably about a foot and a half to two foot deep right now and yesterday allison and i had a heck of a time out here because it'd been 60 plus days since we've been out here and it must have been a deer or something had this thing strung all over the place so we just restrung it um, it is hot we're making it hot from our paddock that runs along the fence up there and um, hoping we don't ever have to go through that again because I had to get all the way out there in that water it was tangled up into the lily pads they're leaving a good amount of residue this back area has a little bit of an issue with multiflora rose and honestly this is about the only field we have that issue with so I'm not going to complain too much about it. I'm going to hit it every few years with a bush hog called a day. But we're leaving great residue out here. So I'm very happy with what they're leaving and they're getting great consumption. We're slowing them right down on this third rotation. I'm really hoping to get 75 days. I don't know if I'll get that. But if I do, I'm going to be really happy. Looking like we might get some more rain. And honestly, I'm not going to complain even if I get wet. Yes, it's raining. And look at this forage we're going into next. Wow. Tons of alfalfa. Also a lot of good grass in there. And I'm excited to hit that field. I think we'll be able to slow them down even a little bit more. That stuff's two foot plus tall. It's good and tender. All the grass is very tender and there's a lot of grass in there. Don't let all that alfalfa fool you. And they're all coming like, hey, we moving or what? We're taking forever here. You can see they're holding great condition. They look really good. Whew, I'm going to put this camera away. It's really coming down. Well, the storm has pretty much passed us now. The sun's wanting to pop back out. I'm looking for a rainbow. <laughs> oh, yes. Lovely. Ugh. It's a little disturbing on how dirty that water looked. <laughs> now that heifer right there in front of us. Wow, what a beaut. Definitely keeping her. Look at the brisket on her. You can already see she's got a nice brisket. Look at her rear end. Man, she's a beaut. Wish they all looked like that. And a nice little storm over that way. Looks like it's south of us, probably five or ten miles. My goodness, look at all them suckers. I caught the deer crossing up there too because that's pretty cool. Ready to move?
This was one of the first tractors that I made. And that handle, I only put two wraps of wire on. <laughs> All the other ones have four wraps. So this is actually the second time that's broke on me. And the first time I flew even further backwards. So I hope that got caught on camera so I can be embarrassed when I watch it. Uh, I've been moving them twice a day now for like the last probably week and a half or so. They are, I want to say, about six and a half weeks old. Uh, we are going to take these hens out a little bit further than what we've done the last couple batches and just see how that goes. Probably going to be, we got them scheduled for nine weeks but i am not going to be committed to that if it need be i'm going to call our processor and say hey i need another week all right dude you got to get back inside missy Looks like we got a predator out here. <sighs> That's a nice chicken too. That's too bad. Well, that only makes two that we've lost out here from predatorial issues. And that's too bad because it was a nice chicken. And uh, it wasn't in there this morning when I moved them. So within the last 12 hours, something has decided to get in there and get it and that was a good sized chicken that's too bad and I don't know where it would have gotten it either because I don't see any holes anywhere but might have been a slight chance they could have got underneath oh right here I can see it look at that just that little bit it went through God, God. Now I'm double checking, I'm triple checking everything. Make sure that it's laying flat everywhere. Now that he knows they're here, that's a little more scary even. These are 10 by 10 chicken tractors, and they're somewhere between, uh, well, there's about 57 to 60 in each of them. And I grabbed these. Looks everybody's healthy in here. Grab the feeders out of there, set them on top, and I'll pull them. And then I always pop the lid off and that tells me don't forget to fill up the water. Just enough feed. So we normally get two days out of this one barrel. And when we get the next batch out here, we'll only get one day. We do have a group of heifers out here. There's only a few of them. And they got good forage out here. Lots of clover down there. Tons of wild carrot in here. And we're really working hard to correct this field. And we're moving them about every um, two to three days. This is what it looks like when we leave them here. You can see there's still a pretty good residual left here, and this grass is already 
poking back up ready to start growing and I did come in here you've seen in the other video I came in here and bush hog this and it's growing back really nice and a lot of it has to do with we left a lot I mean look at how much we left all I did was just tried to knock those lady and lace down and look at the clover coming back this is only um, about five days worth of regrowth right here and I mean there's clover that's fully recovered it's poked right back up and it's starting to put out a bloom already so I'm not going to be able to turn right around and start them back at the front of this field, even though I'm sure the front of this field is going to be even better because there's we're going on a three-week resting period, which we all know is not enough. But that field over there next to us that the chickens are in, um, we're going to run them. Basically, we're going to run them everywhere that the chickens have not been. All right, guys. Well, thanks a lot for coming along with me tonight. Hit that subscribe button if you know anybody that would benefit from these videos go ahead and share it give it a thumbs up appreciate you watching peace and joy god bless